Why is recorded in front of a live studio audience. I'm like, well, we could talk about them. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, some weird. That's, it's like a new folks. and improved thigh master, it seems. Right. But how does that make you better at the sex? I, well, I don't know if it's like a Kegel thing. I don't know, but see, that's why we need to, right. we need to get the ad campaign mm. so we can figure it yeah, out. We get different. We get much different um, <laughs> promo things on. So the ones that I always get now, early on in the pandemic, like one one night, I was sort of doing my my per usual doom scrolling. Yes. And watched two videos that just sort of autoplayed. I just slowed down the scroll to watch it. One was somebody like taking an old rotted out piece of wood, like rotted out in different spots, and it was cut flat. And they put it in a sort of a square box thing and then poured resin in and made a nice coffee table out of it. Oh. And it's almost, it's it's like ASMR level type you know mm -hmm. you sit there and watch it with no sound and they're yeah. slowly pouring resin in and then it's close-ups of the resin filling all the little holes in the wood and you're just like okay like the other day i sat and watched somebody first take the pieces of wood needed to assemble a wooden vase yes. put this up to some sort of device that spins around really fast and then sand it down and make it a vase including the thing where they oil it and make it all pretty I watch that for like five minutes. This is what I've become. I watch other people work. How are we friends? I don't know. I didn't think <laughs> because, it was me. Because I, 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 you, you even complete, uh, your stories never bore me, but that story, I was checked out after that. <laughs> <laughs> this is why with your hosts, Heidi Hedquist and Luke Poling. It it was the I don't know why. I'm just like, this is so calming and soothing. I think this goes back to my long held belief that I wish my job was like making a sailboat. And maybe it's just like I want to live in like a Nicholas Sparks novel. But no, like you don't. but this idea of like <laughs> if if you make furniture for a living, right? At the end of the day, it's a table. Either it works as a table or it doesn't. End of conversation. True. There's no like, was that an interesting conversation with this person who's had a sex with a dolphin? Or is it weird? Like there's, you don't have those like back right. and forths in your head. Are we talking about getting a sponsor who seems to actively promote mass murder or not? <laughs> like there's none of that. No. Just a dude with like a, you know, a very fine sandpaper sanding like a hull <laughs> and it's like usually like dusk so there's like a nice orange glow to everything it's at magic hour mm -hmm. and i feel like you can just sit around and listen to music all day and it just seems like a into the mystic all day yeah exactly you put on some van uh i was gonna say van halen you put on some van morrison and you just you just sand a boat yeah, but i would rather sail the boat look it's not a perfect like, daydream you know like why why do you want to sand somebody else's boat like i want to be on seems, the boat right but it just sort of seems like let's strip away all of the tension and all of the stressors in life and let's take away anything that just feels like it, it is coming down on you why don't you just strip it down to all i need to do is sand this piece of wood really nicely until it sings. All I need to do is <laughs> ply a fine resin with some sort of chamois on this thing till it's a golden, uh, golden brown that, that, that contrasts yet matches the sunset so, so greatly. No. Nope. I mean, it's similar. A few years ago, I had this idea that I wanted to uh, get a white, like cable knit sweater and you maybe get a boat. One? I don't get a boat and have everybody just called me old salt. And that'd be like my, my jaunty nickname. But see, this makes sense to me. This I'm on board with. And if you're sanding your boat in your sweater. Right. Right. And you have to have a, a pork pie hat. Right. And a peacock. But, yeah. But somebody named old salt doesn't, 
sail a boat called that's what she said like it's not <laughs> it doesn't fit with the rest <laughs> of my personality you know well i know but it could <laughs> it could we just have to find a, a, a sort of like i don't know the old like the cuckold or something for your <laughs> boat <laughs> <laughs> So congratulations on the, the new film. Yes, Snow Babies yeah. is now out and available. How did you research this for a film that's pretty stark and pretty harrowing, uh, a look at addiction, given your role in it as the mom? What what did you, did you research for this part? I, I got booked for this part so fast. I was the last character they had to cast. Oh. They were supposed to start shooting on... Tuesday, I think I got the audition on a Thursday and I got booked on it for Saturday. Wow. So I didn't have a lot of time to research prior to that. But in my own personal life, I had an aunt um, who's older than me that battled and still battles addiction since I was a kid. I mean, pretty much her my whole life. So just seeing that from a personal personal aspect, you know, helped me to see you know what that's like unfortunately mm -hmm. yeah yeah is that part of what drew you to the part i think well <laughs> what drew me to the part was just being offered a part <laughs> understood <laughs> <laughs> that's a big draw um, Always. something yes yeah no i think uh, so there's a, a casting um, director in philadelphia named diana erie Gary Loftus casting and I've auditioned for her for quite a few years and she's just wonderful and she recommended me for the part um you know why don't you try Shannon Wilson they've gone through everyone they had people cast different women cast and then something happened and uh you know just all sorts of things can happen so they had to fill this part um but I got the script and my manager said I think this is a you know going to be a really good role for you I thought it was a Christmas movie I really snow babies. I, <laughs> yeah. I, was, I was like, oh, it sounds like a Christmas happy winter film. And then I got the whole script and I thought, okay, completely not that. Yeah. Right. Um, so when I got the script, it was just written so well. Mike Walsh wrote it. And I, it was a female director named Bridget Smith, all local Philly people. And um, just when, when you read a script like that, you just know there's going to be something special. And they wanted to meet with me that Saturday. I, I turned in my tape. My manager, Georgianne, calls me and says, they really loved you. They want to meet with you at a Panera Bread in, Philip, you know, in PA and just talk with you. And I thought, thank God, because callbacks, I don't do that well sometimes on callbacks. There's a lot of pressure. Right. And I thought, I don't want to audition again for this. And so they just met with me for coffee and just talked for like 30 minutes and then offered me the part. Awesome. I'm so grateful. That's wonderful. Yeah, very cool. And yeah, it's good that too that you got the script before you showed up because it'd be awkward if you were on set going, now when do we learn the true meaning of Christmas? <laughs> Reindeer yeah. ears, antlers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when does Kurt Russell show up as Santa? Oh my God. I would love for Kurt Russell to show up as Santa. <laughs> we want Kurt Russell so to show up as everything. As whatever, an yeah. elf. I'll take him as an elf. Yes. Whatever he wants to be. <laughs> You've done a lot of training. Um, I know you're up, Upright Citizens. Um, are you more comfortable doing comedy or is something like this a part you can really dig into something that you're, that's kind of your, your goal? That's, that's interesting you asked that because I was thinking about that yesterday. I have a part coming up where I'm really nervous about it. It's a big scene and it's with an actor that's been around for a really long time. And um, it's, it's not a caricature at all. And she's a real person that I'm playing. Um, so there's some pressure with that because you don't want to overdo something, but she also has her own little spice to her. Uh, and comedy, I think is natural for me that I was, I don't know, I think just kind of off the cuff improv. I was a waitress. I was a bartender. You can just kind of shoot the shit with anybody. If you've done that for a long enough time, um, drama, sometimes mm. you can, there's a lot of, with comedy, there's a lot of pain, right? We all know that you hear, you hear comedy as drama. So there's a lot of pain sometimes with comedy. Some of the comics, the greatest comics have a lot of darkness um, 
within them just from things they've experienced and you find humor that way. So, you know, it depends. Like if I had in Snow Babies in one of the scenes, I, it was very intense and I had to really go to a really hard place that I didn't really want to go to. But our director was made me feel so comfortable to do that. And the, the girl that plays my daughter, Katie Kelly, is phenomenal. Um, so you can kind of just tap into some deep, dark places. I mean, I have to. I have to do that if I have to get to that kind of place. Are you able to stay there or do you like to sort of come back out in between takes? Because for people who haven't been on a shoot, one sequence runs a, a day if everyone's really uh, shooting on all cylinders there. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's definitely a phys phys physiological aspect to it where you're just, you know, your whole heart and your body and your breathing is all part of it. And this was an indie film, so we didn't have the luxury of having an all day situation. So for some of the scenes, Bridget moved pretty quickly because she got what she needed because we all were really together and trying to bring out the best for one another. And um, I don't like to stay there, but this one particular scene, I listened to Chris Cornell to get in to get ready because I think he's so sad. It's just yes, another so hottie. He's yes. so good looking mm -hmm. and talented. Uh, <laughs> tragic. Tragic. And so I listened, <laughs> his music's so haunting. So I listened to his music to kind of get myself ready. And when the scene was over, I was still like <sighs> heaving and breathing and so sad. I think I had PTSD for a little while. Um, and then even watching it back when I watched the film, you know, you can see I mean, I really, it truly was in that place. So yeah, I don't like to really stay there, but I mean, you just gotta do what you have to do because there's a lot of pressure on you to make it happen. Right. And did you shoot in order? I'm assuming you shot out of sequence, which would make that all the harder. Yeah, it's out of sequence. It was out of sequence. Yeah. And we had to reshoot the ending because so, it was so, the ending we had focus groups, they were so distraught, the focus groups. My manager, my uh, Bridget, the director, I had a dream that I got cut from the movie. Oh no. Because <laughs> as an actor, you're always just like, as they say, right. you feel like you're always on the chopping block, you know, yes. in the entertainment industry, you're like, oh my God, I will never be hired. Whatever your, you know, your insecurities. And I dreamt that I got fired. And Bridget called me that next morning. She and some of my dreams actually come true sometimes. So Bridget texted me that morning. And she goes, can you talk? Oh, God. Oh, my God. I <laughs> oh, no, I can't. <laughs> don't, don't call me. It's already, been, it's already been shot. And she's like, Shannon. Um, so we did some focus groups and the only thing they didn't like was, and I'm like, me, she's like the ending. I'm like, Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> Phew. Okay. <laughs> it's always about us. Right. Um, yes. <laughs> so we had to keep the ending and make it hopeful. We wanted to have hope at the end so that people could walk away and see that there is recovery and that you can get better from addiction. It's not just like, okay, you're addicted to heroin and that's it there there are ways around that you can get through it we wanted to show that so with that in mind obviously addiction is something that is and has been tackled a lot in through the through art through all kinds of art through film especially what is it about this film that makes it a little bit different or that that gives a new perspective on something that so many people face every day <sighs> Mike and Bridget um, really researched and spoke to so many people that have addiction and teen addicts and really got their story and took a lot of those stories and put them in the film. And also they shot on Kensington Avenue. We had police escorts on site. On Ken and if anybody's not familiar with Kensington Avenue, but it, it is the epicenter of the heroin problem in our country. People yeah. bust themselves in to Kensington, which is in Philadelphia, to to do to get their heroin so they actually shot lots of you know parts of the movie when the girls and the girls katie kelly and paula and dino are just these beautiful sweet girls and you see them in these scenes and the drug dealer played by dominic costa is so evil he's the sweetest guy but he's so evil in this and uh, you know so i think that's what made it different just the research in it um the locations were actually true you know it, it wasn't a set was it somewhere else? It was it, on Kensington. Well, I think like you just mentioned that it 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 truly does touch everyone. And I think that's something that this country is slowly learning because of the problems we're having now that it, it doesn't mean that you come from, you know, nothing or mm -hmm. you have a terrible family or any of that. It's touching everybody. 
It is. I didn't even know. I was naive to it. I, I didn't realize how bad they were in our how bad heroin was, heroin was in our suburbs until I started doing the film. And then families would show up on set. There's one scene where a few families who lost their own children. One one of the families, their sons, a, he was a Marine. He was 21. Um, fought for our country. Got addicted to opiates because of a ax, you know, uh, an injury. And the mother, the father, his little brother, and the sister were in the scene with us as extras. So they loved the film so much and wanted to be a part of it to help others that we had actual families on the set on some days to um, to be there and support and help answer questions. I had to, you know, ask. I, I could ask the mom. That was another thing, just the research, asking the mom what what she had to go through or, you know, just sensitive questions, but she was, they were so, they wanted to help. So you've also been working, um, it seems like you've all of a sudden really, your kind of workloads picked up a lot. Um, mm -hmm. You've got a couple films coming out. You're working on the new Ryan Murphy Halston series. Yes. Can, can, can you say anything about that? <laughs> To I'm so say excited. Heidi. I know. <laughs> I'm like, excited? Yeah. <laughs> yes, I'm like, it's like everything I love in what I, my love for Halston is beyond. So oh, I so appreciate it. Gave me goosebumps. I so appreciate oh. that you know who he is. And he was, he, he invented Jackie O's pillbox yes. hat. He, he invented it all. And so I mean, innovative. The halter dress. Uh, all of it. And everything was one piece too. You yes. think it all set apart and sewn together, no. but these pieces were just these one, one piece of um, fabric. But he, yes. I, I, I auditioned for that. Part. I can come back in later. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, make, we'll include yeah. you. Yes, we'll give you some of the. Yeah, thank you. I still have an old bottle, actually, just... the old Halston cologne. Do you remember that with the white? Yes. Oh my God. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> no, no. I, I'm so, I love it. I can't wait for people. <laughs> Um, I was in Costa Rica and we got an, I got an audition for that. And it was just a few lines. It was for a different part for, through an agency or a, um, a casting company that I always wanted to get in front of. And I, uh, the, the, there's like three planes that go in and out of Costa Rica, which now I know of Liberia. <laughs> so if you are going to Costa Rica, just make sure that you don't have anything that next day. Cause if, oh. one, goes, if one plane's not working, you're just kind of stuck there. Yeah. So, um, they rearranged the schedule, the audition. I went in, auditioned, didn't hear anything as what happens 90% of the time. And so months later, they called and they said, um, we want to offer her the part of Bobby Mahoney, um, which was so exciting for me because I've never gotten an offer like that. And for this type of show, I, I'm just, it, it's still unbelievable. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. That's going to be so fun. Have you started shooting yet? We shot one day in March, and then it was shut down the next day. Of course. <sighs> so at least we got the one day, and I'm like, oh, I just want to get on set and shoot so that they can't, again, fire me. <laughs> no, you're not going to get fired. Stop. <laughs> you, just, you, just to, you just want to get there so that nothing gets changed. No script changes. You know, like, I just want to get in there. But the, the woman, um, the person who's playing Liza Minnelli, her name's Krista Rodriguez. She's phenomenal. And my friend Shauna is playing a role and she's these are a lot of Broadway actors that are in it and Ewan McGregor was so sweet and my husband that's playing it that's not been announced yet but you guys will know who he is that's exciting it <laughs> rhymes with <laughs> muscle yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah and then you're working on a or I already guess already shot it hasn't come out yet another film with your director from Snow Babies? Yeah, Finding Christmas. Is that correct or is IMDb yeah. lying to me? Okay, no, yes, it is. Right, not lying to you. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, we start that in December. Is this another fake out about Christmas or is it an actual Christmas movie? It's an actual time? Christmas movie. <laughs> and I get to play a South Philly, uh, the wife of, I'm so excited. Her name's Martina. I mean, we're going to be like Adriana, Sopranos, just like total character. And I get to play the mob boss wife, and I'm just going to be so perfect, perfectly South Philly. I cannot wait, which I love South That's Philly so much. Awesome. I love the people from South Philly. They're so just true. Love them. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Are you originally from the Philadelphia area? No, I'm from or... Texas. <laughs> and someone told me once that Italians from South Philly and Texans aren't too far apart because they're very black and white, you know, mm -hmm. eye for an eye. And all of these different little things that I just, 
when I moved out here 18 years ago, anybody, any wife, I'm in the suburbs here, but I get along with all the, the fellow moms that are South Philly girls. It's awesome. And they just, they tell you like it is. It's perfect. They tell it like it is. So you don't have to do much research. You just sort of can walk into the Yeah. Part. And that's going to be fun to be able to play a character because I always play, which I'm grateful for, but a lot of, um, not so much now because casting directors are seeing that I can do different layers, but for a while it was always like the country club woman, the, you know, the Upper East Side lady and all like, you know, these different things. And I'm actually, you know, from Houston and I love local redneck bars and, um, we up with a single mom and just different things that just people wouldn't really attribute me to be like, but so it's fun to be able to play different. For sure. People. And certainly it seems like your uh, body of work's expanding and growing in a way that's not just a typecasting from Snow Babies to Halston mm -hmm. to, you know, the, the Christmas yes. film. I also noticed on your website that you list two of your special skills on your resume as punctuality and taking direction, which really, I think if I saw that, I would be so excited. <laughs> I don't know why more people don't. I mean, you notice we didn't advertise that when we told you about our show. Um, <laughs> Not on your resumes? Nope. <laughs> and it should be. We're pretty punctual. Well, we are I mean, pretty punctual. Yeah. I don't take direction. direction though. Eh, <laughs> yeah. No, that's no. a hard one. <laughs> And it's interesting when you think you're working in a craft that is nothing but collaborative and requiring an interaction between both you and the director, but also you and the other people in every scene that you're in, that you have to sort of bounce off each other. Mm -hmm. uh, have you found some difficulty with, with actors not really kind of giving back or giving what, what you need in sequences or are people mostly giving? No, I haven't found that. I mean, I didn't start trying this until... I guess five and a half, six years ago, going into New York and auditioning. So it's not like I've had this long process of acting and working with so many people, but the people that I've, even on little in, on NYU films, which were fantastic, to, I recommend anyone who wants to get into acting to do student films. if Because you can get good high quality, a good student film. Maybe start off on ones that you may not, you know, think that are kind of high quality, but NYU, and there's good film schools out there. And you can just meet the best people. And so the actors that I've been lucky enough to work with and have all been very collaborative and in love, they're all different. I worked with one, his name's Roger Hendrick Simon, and he's a theater man. He's probably 75. And he played uh, my father with dementia. Um, and he wanted to talk about every word, you know, what do you think the motive was and the motivation <laughs> was? For he was just so studied and theatrical. And I'm not like that because I mean, I wish I were more studied and like that but I'm not and so it was great to work with him because he just took a script and just you know word by word broke it down so that was that was at first challenging because I don't have a lot of patience but then I realized that's the way he's so good and I love him he's like this little old guy he's so cute um so it's just learning how everybody works yeah mm -hmm. what was it that drew you to film in the first place um to, to, to start trying, to start auditioning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I've always loved movies and films and I always thought I'd be okay at it, but I didn't really know. It seems like a lot of work to have to do it. <laughs> so my life just took different turns for a long time, which I'm so grateful for because I've done a lot of stuff. Um, but I think just try, I didn't want to regret it. It's worse to what to regret than to fail. Right. So I just thought I'm just going to try it and see if I have, if I can, I have a manager, she believes in me. I'm just going to head up on in to New York and see what I can, what I can do. And that's what I did. And it took a long, I mean, I remember, I'll never forget the casting directors that gave me the chance, you know, gave me a chance to come in. I was so green, didn't have anything on my resume and I didn't book. I booked, I, I auditioned for a lot of television and didn't book a lot of it. I would say most most all of it but they would call me in again and again and that's that's really special because they believe in you and they see something in you for more information on shannon you can go to her website which is shannon wilson s-h-a-n-n-a-n wilson.com 
And you can check out Snow Babies on Amazon's Prime Video. You can follow us on all the various socials. Our website is whythepodcast.com and has all sorts of additional stories and videos. It's also where you can sign up for our newsletter. We're also on YouTube if you're into that kind of thing. And don't forget to leave us a review on iTunes. Because if you don't, we'll call your mother and tell her that she's completely right. You would look so much prettier if you smiled more. Why the Podcast is part of Mudhouse Media. Today's show was produced by myself and Heidi Hegquist. Our reluctant executive producers are John Sove and Sandy Stone. Our willing executive producers are Rachel Allen and Randy Jeanette. Our graphic designer is Samantha Mustonen. The theme song was performed by the Electrosynth O Magnetic Polyphonic Orchestra. This one's for Philippe. Thanks for joining us. Flash, we're coming home. Nigel, is that you? Are you here, Nigel?